This is the morning office for March 23rd. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of your sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 85, verses 1 to 7. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgotten the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Say, Thus says the Lord God, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone, and will gather them from every quarter, and bring them to their own land. I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. Never again shall they be two nations, and never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. They shall never again defile themselves with their idols and their detestable things, or with any of their transgressions. I will save them from all the apostasies into which they have fallen, and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall follow my ordinances and be careful to observe my statutes. They shall live in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, in which your ancestors lived. They and their children and their children's children shall live there forever and my servant David shall be their prince forever. I will make my covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will bless them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary among them forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Then the nations shall know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary is among them forevermore. The word of the Lord. Jesus, Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. The French priest Georges Bernanos says, Keeping silence, what a strange expression. Silence keeps us. I've been thinking about that and exactly how it is that silence might keep us. I think it is important to say that it keeps us as a guard and in a way that cares for us rather than in a way that entraps or limits us in some way. Certainly, as people who live in our senses, we can imagine that anything that seems less in terms of our senses would be limiting to us. But I don't think that's the case with silence. I think it is a way of broadening our understanding of the world, our understanding of ourselves, and our understanding of God. It's not really a servant or a master. We sometimes talk about something as being a good servant but a poor master. 
I think in the case of silence, it's neither. Rather, it's a companion. It goes with us on the way. It is with us as we live our lives as faithful people. I ask your prayers for the day, for the world, and for the church. As we are on the edge of Holy Week, pray that we will discover something more deep about ourselves and more deep about God as we go through these days of the great events of our God's work in the world from Palm Sunday to Easter. Pray that the world in this time will have peace, that perhaps the world will still its strife, as it says in the Christmas hymn, uh, and listen to what it is God is doing. And pray that the church, as it comes once again to these great days, will have serenity and grace to proclaim the message that God would have us proclaim. O Lord, in your goodness you bestow abundant graces on your elect. Look with favor, we entreat you, upon those who in these Lenten days are being prepared for holy baptism, and grant, that the help, grant them the help of your protection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>